Robert is in Indiana. Hey, Robert, welcome to the Entree Podcast. What's up? Thanks, Dave, for your time. Uh, so I'm a superintendent and carpenter for a commercial general contracting company. Uh, we do about $3 million a year. We've got six carpenters, one office staff, and the owner's getting close to retirement. So uh, we're talking about me and another guy, another one of the carpenters taking over. Uh, I was hoping that we'd work it out where I'd buy the company myself outright, you know, similar to your uh, strategy that you've laid out for owner financing for that. But the other carpenter would like to have some minority stock in it. And the owner has recently uh, suggested, what if the two of us each buy a third of the company, he keeps the controlling third, and then when he's fully ready to retire, we'd buy out the rest of that. And the other guy, the other carpenters agreed that, you know, when we take over, I would have the controlling stock of the company. Um, but just, you know, with this different plan, uh, I, I was just looking at, you know, if you had any feedback, things I should be thinking about, questions I should be asking. Hmm. It's interesting. What is the price? Have we set a price? Uh, we haven't set a price yet. Uh, the His accountant set it at, you know, 600 to 700 valuation. And we're usually take the past five years, you know, we've been taking home 150 to 200 net profits. That seems right. The owner has said, you know, he would set the purchase price lower than that, lower than the 600, but we haven't set what the price is. Okay. And uh, so a third's 200, give or take. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, how much have you got? How many, have you got the 200 for your third? Well, and what, uh, what we've talked about is still, you know, if we're each buying a third of the company, still setting it up so that we would be paying out from the our portion of the profit of the company at the end okay. of the year. Like like we teach folks to do. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yep. Good. And so you're got, there's no upfront cash at all. It's just going to come from the profits. And, the, and, yeah. and so it's a two-stage deal. Stage one is each of you buy out a third. Stage two is you buy out the other third. Yeah. Yep. And and part of you know what I'm thinking through it, it seems all right to me as long as you know we've got it in writing what our roles and responsibilities are. That you know we've got in chief, not the two of us trying to split it. That we've got a buy sell agreement. That we've got a timeline set out to buy out the owner's remaining third. Uh, but I just feel like there's so much in here. So what I happens during the t during the interim if the owner and the other partner side against you? They have a majority on yeah. some major decision. You're screwed. Yeah. And and I mean going going in any direction. If any two guys got together, um, and and I don't know if that's something that's easy enough to just put into the to the contract to say, you know, because the the owner would still have control of the company until he decides to finally retire. How would he have control if he only has one third? Well, so my, I don't know exactly how we would, you know, work it out. You know, I know I've heard you say that, you know, you've got the only voting yeah, stock you in do, your you company. You could do voting stock, non-voting um, stock in the LLC. Yeah. yeah. And the other, you know, I think the easier way, which is probably what my boss is thinking is that, you know, he would have 34% until, you know, we buy that out. That still then. doesn't give him control if the two of you yeah. ganged up on him. That's true, yeah. Yeah, so uh, not percentage-wise. All right, so, okay. Um, I don't think it's the end of the world. I'm not sure I understand why this other guy even needs to be in the deal. Yeah, so um, the the idea from the start was that the two of us would take over the management together and, I'm better at the office side. He's better at the field side. So the partnership works out well. And, and I was, you know, suggesting that I would buy the company and just, you know, keep him on as right-hand man. Yeah, and pay him out uh, of profits. One, yeah, yeah. And one thing he mentioned that he feels more comfortable if he has some ownership so that I can't just kick him to the curb. You can, though. Um, you can. Yeah. Because you're going to end up a two-thirds yep. owner at any point. He's a minority shareholder in a small business. His shares are absolutely worthless if you decide to make them that way. Yeah. You can run the company in the ground against every wish he ever had, and his shares end up worth zero. 
and he can't do anything about it if you're sixty six percent. There's no contract in the world that would be other that would keep that from happening. So I think you're trying to make this partnership do something for him that it can't do. So my first premise is I don't do partnerships. The partnership is the only ship that won't sail. You've heard me say that because you've heard all these other things. So I know you've heard me say that. So my first thing would be to figure out a way that he gets paid off the profits and has a has a right hand uh, executive vice president position where he's speaking into everything. You trust him. You're going to treat him with dignity. You're going to treat him as a as an operating partner, even though he's not an owner. And um, he's going to get everything he wants except stock. And the stock is what's messy. Yeah. That's what's messy. And it doesn't do him any good when he's not a, when he's not a majority shareholder. A minority shareholder in a small business is what's known as screwed. Yeah. You, you, they, can't, they can't do anything. Okay? They can't force their will on anything. So his ownership position, the only thing it affords him is the increase in value of the company and the cash flow from the profits. That's the only thing it affords him. And you can give him those things without him having stock. So I'm going to try to structure this differently. That's my first goal if I'm in your all shoes. I have operating board members that are paid off the same line I'm paid off of. They, put, they make zero income if the company is not profitable, and they make buku if the company's profitable. And they've made buku. So they're doing really well. They don't own a single share. And when they quit and leave and go somewhere else or are fired, if that happened, they don't get anything. And I don't have to do a buyout, and we don't have any messiness. It's just they quit their job, and their job was an incredible paying job. Or they got fired from their job, and their job was an incredible paying job because they were paid off the partnership line the bottom line of the PL, the ownership line of the PL. That's where I would really like this guy to be. Uh, it, it allows him to be free. If you don't do that, the complexity of this partnership agreement is going to be costly. And I've covered it on here before, but I'll cover it again to make sure because, in context of this, you have to cover what we all, uh, always talk about are the D's divorce. She divorces him. And the judge awards her his ownership position. Now you're partners with his ex. That mm -hmm. can happen. Okay? That sounds like fun. How about default? Uh, he just won't come to work. Disinterest. I don't want to work there anymore, but I still want to own it. I had one of those one time. Gee, you got to be kidding me. <coughs> no, you work here. That's part of the deal. You do your part of the job. Oh, how's that part of the deal? Well, that's what we, no, we didn't agree. Oh, yes, we did. No, it's in the dadgum written. So default, divorce. What happens if he, God help you, gets disabled? He's in a wheelchair, is a car wreck. How are you, you going to continue to give him the profits to take care of him? Bless his heart. You got to do it. You, otherwise, you're the bad guy. You're going to give him the money. You're going to give her the money. You, you know, what if he dies? Well, that's your buy-sell agreement. You got term insurance to buy each other out automatically upon that. You've already thought of that one, or somebody thought of it for you. You brought it up. Um, so death, disability, drug use. He's doing cocaine. How are you going to fire this guy? You got to buy him out. If he was doing cocaine and he was an employee, you'd fire him in 13 seconds. And you'd be sad because he's your main guy, but you can't keep your main guy doing cocaine. Yeah. You know, and this is what this is what happens. So you got, you know, uh, all kinds of addictions out there. Oh, he's great except for his porn addiction, you know, and his marriage is a wreck and his, he, he can't think straight, you know. Oh, my gosh. You know, no, that doesn't work. So you, this is the kind of crap you're going to get into. And I know it's never going to happen to you, and I know he's a great guy, and that's what they all say. So now I... I I'm sorry, I've just been doing this too long. I'm a little bit jaded. I, Robert, here, you could tell your two guys this. We do this for 10,000 businesses right now, plus, across America. We see, other than law firms and medical, which is a different kind of partnership, doctors and lawyers, okay? Those are different types of partnerships than we're talking about. 
But two guys doing what you're talking about, two ladies opening up a dress shop, two guys opening up a heating and air company or buying into a heating and air, two brothers going, uh, my cousin and me are going to buy a heating and air company together. The number of those that are still operating together 10 years later is approaching zero. They almost never survive a decade for one reason or another. There's just too much rate of change in our world. And um, what you guys are putting together is something that's very hard to undo. So... I'm going to encourage all three of you to think about a different way of structuring this. Uh, if you go forward, though, really get down in the weeds and really think about every possible worst-case scenario and address it in the document clearly. How are you going to cover if you got to fire him for drug use? How are you going to buy him out? What's the valuation? What's the process? What's the timeline? If he's disabled and in a chair, what are you going to do? If he dies, well, you got to buy a cell. That one's fairly simple and clean, sadly. But, um, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, can you going to set the thing up where it's in a trust so it can actually say, oh, no one but him can own the stock to keep a divorce judge, a probate judge out of the pocket of the thing? Because um, if his wife gets pissed and the judge sides on her side in the divorce, whoo, baby. Yeah, that's going. To, that's going to sound like fun. So yeah, that's that's a mess. It's a, it's just a it's a barrel of fish hooks, and I don't want to stick my hand in it personally. Uh, I don't do them. I'm, somebody comes up with me and goes, "Hey, we want to do a partnership." I'm like, "Yeah, well, sorry, it's good. Good luck with that. I hope it works for you." Um, we don't do them. We don't enter into them. Life's too short, and you can tell I've had problems with this in the past. Thus, I'm so angry and bitter about it. But um, yeah, I just don't want that for you, Robert. I want you guys to have a clean deal. Uh, if you're going to go forward with the method you're doing, please spend the ten thousand or twenty thousand bucks on the attorneys and get this thing drawn up. It's going to be th half as thick as an old phone book of some kind. Some of you people don't know what a phone book is, and so, um, oh man, I'm old. But the um, yeah, so that uh, a, a thick document is what you're going to end up with here, covering all the possible ins and outs and processes. I hope it works for you because it sounds like you're both good guys. Sounds like the owner's not a bad guy. I don't hear any bad guys in the mix, which gives me hope that y'all can figure out a way to do this. I, you know, just going to encourage you to try to research and look at other directions, other methodologies that don't involve um, this deal only works if everything works. And I just don't like those plans. That's simple.